Welcome to It's Your Ego, Stupid, a show lovingly intended for millions of spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people like you who may at times be led into ego stupidity, a lesser version of yourself and a lesser version of life. This show will give you a much deeper understanding of what ego is, what it's doing to your life, how it can weaken your human and spiritual wellness, and how you can heal in each of these areas if needed. It's Your Ego, Stupid will heighten your awareness of the intense link between your ego and spirit, your humanity and divinity, and the synergy that can lead to the best version of you and your life. Your host is Dr. Nick Martin, a licensed psychologist who has worked in the clinical, university, school, and private practice settings over the past 40 years, while serving as a therapist, diagnostician, educator, and consultant. Welcome again to It's Your Ego, Stupid, and now your host, Dr. Nick Martin. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nick Martin, also known by some as Ego Man. Due to my intense focus on ego and how it's impacting our lives, both humanly and spiritually. I want to thank you for listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, and I hope you've had a great week as you go about meeting the many important challenges that we all face, which during today's show will have us looking at how higher ego vulnerability contributes to difficulty interacting with people and getting along with them, how their difficulties in accepting themselves and the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity affects the ways they interact and meet people in general, not just family and friends. These are the kind of interactions that may may take place in a work or school setting, perhaps play or recreational, as well as social gatherings like parties and general public settings like stores and sporting events. These are the places that often involve dealing with acquaintances and strangers, or those people they may loosely think of as being friends. Our success in connecting with people in these broader social contexts has important implications for our social, emotional, and spiritual growth. It's this growth that allows us to experience a sense of peace and love for all people, regardless of their background and whether we know them or not, and not living in a social bubble or being caught up in tribalism, something that seems to be happening for many people. When you look at some of the lack of civility you often see playing out in society, these are people having difficulty interacting with people in healthy ways and getting along with them. If they were able to do so, this wouldn't be happening. And this is something that many people are having trouble doing, which is having a harmful effect on the quality of their lives, and often the lives of the people they live with, because they often bring their getting along with people difficulties home with them. Failure to cultivate their social growth and ability to get along with people often sets the stage for mental health, marital, sexual, drug and alcohol, legal and work adjustment difficulties. Because social maturation has an important impact on our emotional maturation and spiritual development. And that's why the first society that we live in, our family, has a profound effect on our emotional and spiritual development, for better or worse, depending on whether it's healthy, mildly dysfunctional, or significantly dysfunctional, with the latter involving lots of abuse or neglect, be it physical, emotional, mental, or sexual. Because this affects our ego energy and what we are bringing into the outside world and whether we can can continue to grow socially and emotionally and spiritually. And that's just why I consider it to be one of the important life areas. That is the ability to interact and get along with people in healthy ways. Failing to do so will stop you from having a great life or even a good life. The quality of your life is going to be poor or fair at best if you don't get along with people. 
I'll be looking at this difficulty, getting along with people in healthy ways, in this and my other programs that are specifically focused on a particular imbalanced ego energy and its impact on getting along with people, which again, during our show today, we'll be looking at higher ego vulnerability and its impact on one's ability to do so. But before we go more deeply into that focus, I want to mention that It's Your Ego Stupid is a program for spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people, just like you and me, who may at times be led by our ego into something I call ego stupidity, a lesser version of ourselves, and often a lesser version of life, often a poor or fair one at best. Ego stupidity rooted in ego energy affecting relationships with our family, friends, and co-workers, and even ourselves, that could stand some improvement, often a lot of improvement. Ego stupidity rooted in ego energy impacting our efforts to achieve, to make use of our potential, to recognize the service in what we are doing, whatever that is and experiencing a sense of meaning connected to our life's work. Ego stupidity, affecting our ability to do effectively with all of the changes, adversity, stressors, and conflicts taking place in our life, often leading to their managing us rather than our managing them. Ego stupidity, making it difficult to grow our mind with truth, while keeping us stuck in faulty beliefs, values, attitudes, and prejudices, with many acquired nowadays from unfiltered social media, fake news on the internet, and opinion news on TV that is masquerading as truth, and often suggesting that truth doesn't really matter anymore, leading many to avoid inconvenient truths. These are truths that we need to hear, even though we may not want to hear them. Ego stupidity, making it difficult to feel genuine, lasting happiness, while often leading us into unnecessary anxiety, anger, guilt, sadness, or fake happiness being substituted for the real thing. And finally, ego stupidity, impacting our spiritual wellness and ability to be the love, the life, and the energy God is in our daily thoughts, words, and deeds. In short, impacting our ability to be our divinity in our daily life. As you can see, there are lots of important places that ego stupidity can make its appearance in our lives, the source of which is the nature of our ego energy. If things aren't going as well as you'd like in any of these areas, you've come to the right place because a lot of what's going wrong has nothing to do with our intelligence. It has nothing to do with the absence of spirituality. It has nothing to do with the presence of mental instability. It has a lot more to do with our ego energy serving as the fuel for ego stupidity. Your lives, relationships, and experiences have taught me all of that over the past 40 years. And what I'm sharing with you in my website, books and shows about ego energy and ego stupidity, and how we can heal it with ego medicine when and where needed. Again, I want to thank you for tuning into It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio. During today's show, we're going to take a look at the impact that higher ego vulnerability has on the way a person gets along with people, particularly people they know less well, like acquaintances and strangers. As a quick reminder, people with higher ego vulnerability often enter into social settings with feelings of insecurity and vulnerability that they're often unaware of, but lie at the roots of their difficulties. 
their difficulties or issues experiencing a healthy ability to accept themselves, including their weaknesses and imperfections, is often operating behind the scenes to affect how they are when they are meeting with people, particularly the ones that they know less well. This causes their anxiety level to go up, which can flood their mind and affects the kinds of thoughts and behaviors that make their appearance in social settings, be they one-to-one -one or in group contexts. They're often concerned with social rejection and may keep their distance to avoid letting people see who they really are. Their sensitivity and increased sense of vulnerability make people appear to be less safe than they really are. They can at times be good at finding re rejection or criticism where it wasn't intended, perhaps misinterpreting a look or a comment. Some may try to overcompensate for their insecurities by going on the attack, by showing off, and putting on a facade of superiority or being better than others are. The more they are doing this, the higher the amount of higher ego vulnerability that is flowing into their mind. We'll be mentioning more of the symptoms and ego stupidity often occurring for higher ego vulnerability people when they are having difficulty being with people in healthy ways as we go further into our show. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Well, there are millions of people who experience these very difficulties because there are over 8 billion people on the planet, and every one of them has an ego, just like you and me. Some of them are living in roles such as the stressed out person, the overly self-critical person, the perfectionist, and the overachiever that I talk about in my book, The Two Voices Within. I want you to take a look to see if you or a loved one is experiencing any of the symptoms, the ego stupidity, and the ego impact on spiritual wellness I'll be talking about today. I want you to diagnose you, because you're the only one living you 24-7. Now we're going to take a look at some of the symptoms which indicate if a higher ego vulnerability voice, the mixture of your energy, your ego energy that is, and your mind, is talking to and through you in your life when you're meeting with people. And here's the first symptom. You often withdraw and retreat into the background when involved in social groups. People with higher vulnerability often play it safe for the most part when they are in group context or even when they're meeting with one, on a one-to-one -one basis with somebody they don't know very well. Uh, they often enter into social situations with concerns about exposing their weaknesses and their imperfections, which are often normal ones, but they're sensitive to showing them or revealing them to others. This leads to this need to kind of play it safe and maybe hold back, maybe withdraw or retreat into the social background. Here are a few questions for you to consider in regards to this particular symptom and how much it applies to you. Do you hesitate or do you fail to make the first move when it comes to participation? Meaning you're not the person who maybe leads or asserts themselves when meeting with people or interacting within a group that you're kind of waiting to be invited or included or getting somebody's permission or okay for you to be more actively involved. Another question. Do you anticipate that people will judge you negatively or criticize your efforts to participate? That in some ways they may shut you down for becoming more involved. Again, it's this sense of vulnerability that's being carried around, this ego vulnerability energy that leads to people uh, anticipating judgment, often negative, or criticism that can come from being involved. Another question. Do you often publicly agree but disagree privately due to fear of social rejection? 
meaning that when people are talking about different things, it's easier for you to kind of on the surface, suggesting that you agree with what they're saying, but in actuality, you maybe have some reservations or uh, disagreement that you don't speak uh, out loud. When you think of some of these questions and the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? We're going to go on to the next symptom. You're intimidated by people whom you perceive as more capable including those in positions of authority and even successful people. There's a sense of being intimidated by people that you look upon as being more capable or people in positions of authority and of being successful. Again, the, the vulnerability, the higher ego vulnerability energy is often leading into this direction. Uh, people with higher vulnerability often feel threatened by people they see as more accomplished than they are. Those are the kinds of people, successful people, authority uh, related people, uh, and so on. Well, here are a few questions for you to think about. Do you spend too much time comparing yourself to others? And meaning you can be comparing yourself financially, how much do they make versus how much do I make? Maybe it's a physical comparison, how attractive people are. Maybe it's vocational, career related, how well they're doing versus how well I'm doing. People with higher ego vulnerability energy it often fosters the comparative thoughts that they experience. And many of those thoughts are less than thoughts, I'll call them. I'm doing less well than those persons are. And that's, again, originating from the ego energy filtering into the mind of the person. Another question do you look for reasons to attack or criticize these people, maybe finding something wrong with them? Again, the ego energy is driving you as a result of the comparisons to perhaps invalidate their accomplishments, their success, um, because it, it it makes you feel better or feels, makes you feel uh, maybe more secure to engage in this kind of attacking. Now, you're not conscious of the fact why you're doing it, but this is often the reason for it. It's the energy going on inside of your mind. The, another question, do you see yourself as less than or not as good as these people? People with higher ego vulnerability often get caught up in a lot of less than or not as good as kinds of thoughts uh, and again, this is coming from the higher ego vulnerability energy at work that leads to these comparisons and they often find themselves lacking. And that is due to the lack of acceptance of themselves in their weaknesses and their imperfections, which become amplified in these kind of situations. When you think of these questions and the symptom, does any of this sound familiar to you? We're going to take a look at one more symptom before we go to our first break. And this symptom involves you may attempt to dominate and become overly assertive in social groups, attempting to dominate or become overly assertive in social groups. Some people with higher vulnerability may try to overcompensate for hidden feelings of weakness and insecurity by being loud and overly self-confident. You're maybe telling everybody about how great you are, how important your accomplishments have been. And that's really just overcompensation. The more you do it, the more that's going on. Here are some questions for you to think about. Do you have a need to let others know how successful or capable you are? Again, this is higher ego vulnerability energy at work, driving your getting involved in these kinds of thoughts about telling other people how great you are how well you're doing and doing it often, not just once in a blue moon, but doing it often. Also, do you have a hard time recognizing the successes of others? You know, recognizing their successes and acknowledging them. It's almost as if that touches the nerve because quietly you're comparing yourself to them and you're publicly saying something that suggests they are better than you are. And that's not easy for you to do or and one more question, do you have a hard time complimenting others on their successes? Being able to openly acknowledge and compliment them. Again, sort of the nerve that's going on inside having, you know, where you're comparing yourself to others and what they're doing. When you think of these questions, 
and the symptom. Does any of this sound familiar to you? We're coming up on our first break. When we return, we'll be looking at some reflections of ego stupidity connected to higher ego vulnerability when meeting with people. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on On Times Radio, and I'll see you after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, Dr. Nick Martin here. I want to invite you to visit my website, egoandspirit.info, where you can find lots of information on ego and download your free ebook copy of It's Your Ego Stupid. Fix it to fix your life. Also, please visit the shop page where you can find each of my other books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, and The Two Voices Within. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at some of the reflections of ego stupidity that can be happening in a higher ego vulnerability person's difficulties while attempting to healthily interact with people. Some of them may be strange or weird or appear to be inappropriate, but often that's because you're not living in that energy. But for those that are living with higher vulnerability, it can lead them to engage in ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that affect their ability to be with people due to their higher level of ego vulnerability. It often leads them to conclude that the abnormal things they think, feel, or do are normal when dealing with people. Another way of saying it is that they're normalizing abnormality. And like the symptoms, they can become their abnormal normal that they don't realize they're caught up in. But others often can because they're not looking at them through the same ego energy prism that the higher vulnerability person is looking through to see what's really taking place when they're being and dealing with people, particularly the ones they know less well. And they are intelligent, spiritual, imperfect, and mentally stable people who have gotten caught up in the web of an abnormal world of their own making. Ego didn't make it. They did. And this is happening due to their unhealthy, higher ego vulnerability energy. And they can remain there until they heal the energy, leading them to the symptoms and the ego stupidity that is playing out in their lives. Doing this with the use of ego medicine, which consists of three things. The first of which is to understand what ego is and isn't. Coming to an understanding that ego is an energy. It's our survival energy at work in our daily lives to promote our survival as well as our mortal survival. And also coming to understand that ego doesn't have a mind it's of its own. It doesn't have an intellect. It doesn't have the ability to think for itself. You're the one who does thinking built upon the energy of ego flowing into your mind. 
and also understanding that your ego doesn't form intentions. It doesn't have the ability to determine the way your life should go. That's something, something again, you do. I mentioned that because oftentimes writings connected to ego often give the impression that your ego is taking over for your thinking when it's not, and also that your ego is forming intentions in having to do with your life. Ego doesn't have an awareness of itself. It doesn't have an awareness of you, and it doesn't have an awareness of God. It doesn't have the ability to form intentions because it's simply an energy. The second contributor to ego medicine is being able to tune into your ego energy, coming to an understanding of how much ego power, ego flexibility, and ego vulnerability are operating within your mind that have an impact on the way you think, feel, and act in your life, particularly in regards to the 10 key life areas. This is not something you can do alone because it's new territory. No one has ever written about the ego energy I talk about in its breadth or depth. And uh, this is something that you can work with using my books, using my website, and using these programs. And then the third ingredient or contributor to ego medicine is being able to replace ego-rooted, non-reality-based truth, disconnected thoughts and beliefs that we created with those that are connected to truth and reality, both human and divine. And that's where the next part of today's show is going, to look at this third contributor to ego medicine that involves looking at reflections of ego stupidity for the disconnection from reality. These are the kinds of inaccurate, illogical, or irrational thoughts that people with higher vulnerability can often bring into their efforts to deal with and interact with people. And here's the first one. I need to prevent people from seeing who I really am. People with higher vulnerability often get caught up in this thought of needing to prevent people from seeing who they really are, as if that's a really healthy and a good idea. In actuality, it's a non-reality based idea because it's not healthy for you to, pre pre to hide who you really are. Uh, people with higher vulnerability often want to hide who they really are from people. And this is another way of saying you're being phony. And phoniness is not the premise upon which good relationships can ever be formed. Some additional reflections of ego stupidity uh, built upon this idea is that I can prevent people from seeing who I really am. This is idea that by I can protect I can protect myself by preventing people from seeing who I really am. And that's a non-reality based thought because people are pretty good at getting a sense of where we're at, who we are. Um, they may not have the exact details, but they often can sense the uh, lack of genuineness, the phoniness that may be coming through when they spend time and get to know you a little bit better. Another non-reality based thought is that if people knew who I really am, they wouldn't like or accept me. Again, if people knew who I really am, they wouldn't like or accept me. That's a non-reality based thought because oftentimes people are willing to accept us as we are. Uh, they are willing to not judge us. And really what's coming through is you're judging yourself and they're picking up on that. Um, and so if you're good with yourself, and I often share this with people, people are generally going to be good with you. If you can accept yourself, even with your weaknesses and imperfections, your humanity, that tends to work for people because it conveys a genuine quality, a realness to who you are uh, when you're being with them. Another thought, non-reality based, I need to prove to people that I'm capable. It's this notion that I have to show people that I, uh, I have to prove that I'm a good person, I'm a worthy person uh, to them. And that's a non-reality based thought because we don't need to prove anything to anybody, whether it's to ourselves or anybody else. If we truly love and accept ourselves, we don't need to get involved in this kind of proving kinds of activity. This doesn't mean we don't try to become a better person and improve upon our challenges. But that's not the same as having to prove ourselves to anybody. And actually, this proving stuff is more like a strategy to hide who we really are. 
when your higher ego vulnerability is healing, you begin to realize that it's okay for you to be who you really are with people, even if that comes with revealing your weaknesses and imperfections. But until then, when you're thinking that you need to prevent people from seeing who you are and all of the rest, well, that's your ego making you stupid. Here's the next non-reality-based thought, reflection of ego stupidity. People are judging me negatively. People are judging me negatively. People with higher vulnerability, due to their heightened vulnerability, often think that people are looking for the worst in them. They're looking for the bad things. They want to know them. I should mention that maybe really unhealthy people are doing that, but for the most part, most people have their own stuff. They have their own issues. They're not that concerned about who we are. Uh, and these are, this is ego stupidity that can often feed into additional non-reality-based thoughts, ego-rooted. People aren't seeing the good stuff, meaning that people don't, don't notice good things about me. But in fact, many times they actually are. You just don't know that they are. Another, another non-reality-based thought, people are spending a lot of time judging me. Again, this whole notion of judgment is is coming through, and, and that judgment thought is really rooted in the ego energy flowing around in the person's mind, that higher ego vulnerability that gets projected onto what other people are doing when they're not doing that at all. Also, that people enjoy seeing my weaknesses. Somehow people enjoy seeing our weaknesses. And in most cases, people don't care. They're not into, they're not getting off on who we are or what our weaknesses are. When your higher ego vulnerability is healing, you realize that most of the time people aren't judging you at all and that you're projecting judgment onto them. That's really your judgment of you that you're pushing on to them. Until then, when you're thinking that people are judging you negatively and all of the rest, that's your ego making you stupid. Got one more reflection of ego stupidity. I can't say no to people. I can't say no to people. Uh, that's a non-reality base. But of course, it is necessary sometimes that we should say no to people. Uh, people with higher vulnerability are often very sensitive to social rejection, which is something that can happen when you don't give people what they want. Sometimes that's a good thing, giving people what they want may be a sign of enabling them in, in ways that are unhealthy. But this is a non-reality-based thought that many people with higher vulnerability get caught up in, again, connected to that fear of social rejection. This is ego stupidity that can feed into additional ego stupidity also that includes that saying no to people is wrong, that it's a wrong thing to say no to people. That's a non-reality-based thought because oftentimes no is a very healthy word. As a parent, we know that we need to do that. Also, I should put other people's wants and needs ahead of my own. Again, this is another one of those issues that people with higher ego vulnerability get into where social rejection and social disapproval becomes attached to wants and needs and getting theirs, supporting their needs rather than your own. And one more thought, people will like me more for saying yes to them. Well, they may like what you did more, but they didn't necessarily like you more. And that makes it a non-reality based thought. When your higher vulnerability is healing, you begin to realize that no can be a very important word to say to people at the right time and in the right places. But until then, when you're thinking that you're not able to say no to people and all of the rest, that's your ego making you stupid. Now we're going to go on to some specific ego insights that are connected to the symptoms and the ego stupidity I've been talking about. Uh, these can help you better see what's going on behind the scenes and beneath the surface when it comes to difficulty in dealing with people for those experiencing higher ego vulnerability. These are insights that are intended to help you see more of your ego blindness and what ego is actually doing when it comes to these difficulties. And here's the first one. Your higher ego vulnerability voice, that mixture of your energy, your ego energy and your mind, is leading you to think that people are seeing you the way you are seeing you. 
mentioned earlier how we can project uh, what other people are, our thoughts about ourselves onto what other people are seeing or thinking. So it's leading you to project, project yourself onto them as if they were you. But they're not you. They're them. And it's leading you to see people less positively due to the potential for social, repre, uh, social rejection that represent and which you are amplifying, you're exaggerating. Um, and it's also leading you to want to hide from them, which prevents the formation of genuine, real relationships. Something I mentioned earlier when we're being phony or non-real, it gets in the way of healthy uh, interactions. When you awaken and are more conscious of your higher ego vulnerability, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. Our next insight, your higher vulnerability voice is leading you to expect and find social rejection where it was never intended. Again, you're looking to find and expect social rejection where it was never intended. Again, that's your higher ego vulnerability energy at work leading you in this direction. It's leading you to take all criticisms as being destructive or most criticisms as being destructive and not constructive, something that you're very good at. And it's also leading you to miss when people are really trying to help you. Sometimes people are trying to be useful and helpful and beneficial to us but that energy gets in the way and it leads to misinterpretation or misunderstanding of the good things that people are trying to give to us when they are revealing the face of God in their thoughts, words, and actions to us, but we, we miss it because of this energy. And it's leading you towards a misunderstanding and misperception of people. I mentioned earlier how you may tend to think that most people are, quote, dangerous or psychologically unsafe. When you awaken and are more conscious of your higher ego vulnerability energy, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. I'm going to take a look at one more insight before we go to our next break. Your higher vulnerability voice, the blending of your ego energy and mind, is leading you to think that you must become a better person, maybe a more successful person, for people to accept you and for you to accept you meaning you need to become a better person, more successful person. I mentioned that proving stuff earlier to accept you and to accept yourself. It's leading you to a misunderstanding of what real healthy relationships are about. It's leading you into forming conditional relationships in which your connection to others is based on how much people like and accept you in exchange for what you've given them. So a lot of perceptions of liking and acceptance have to do with how much you can give to people. That's your perception. And it's leading you to, into trying to use social acceptance as a substitute for, for a lack of self-acceptance, which is something that will never work. You cannot substitute social acceptance for a lack of self-acceptance. When you awaken our more and become more conscious of your higher vulnerability energy, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. We're coming up on our second break. When we return, we'll be looking at ego's impact on our spiritual wellness. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio. And I'll see you after the break. The Real Conscious Connection. Own Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Satvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on OM Times Radio. If I could be you, and you could be me. 
for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in my, in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at how higher ego vulnerability can impact our spiritual wellness when it comes to getting along with people. We're looking at ego's impact on the connection that's actually a disconnection between our humanity and our divinity. The disconnection from the God within our being, which is one of the four divine gifts that we've all been given. The gift of God within, that makes it possible for all of us to exist, to live. The lessening of our spiritual wellness involves gaining distance from being the love, the life, and the energy God is, within our thoughts, words, and deeds. When ego is getting in the way of experiencing healthy interactions and developing healthy relationships with people, people we know less well. Each of these can be undermining our spiritual wellness by distancing us from God, the God within us, our divinity. Here are some examples of ego's impact on spiritual wellness for those with higher ego vulnerability who are failing to be their divinity when being with people. And we'll get started with ego's impact on being the love God is when dealing with people. People with higher vulnerability have difficulty being spiritually well when difficulty accepting themselves and being consumed with the weaknesses and the imperfections of their humanity weakens their ability to interact with people with unconditional connective, unburdened, and unlimited love. Your divinity involves lovingly interacting with people that embraces the opportunity to get to know each other, including our weaknesses and imperfections, in order to grow relationships and being able to recognize the presence of God in oneself and all people. When your higher vulnerability and concerns about being acceptable are leading you to approach people with needs to receive approval and to avoid rejection from them, you're not able to be the unconditional love God is towards yourself. We must bring unconditional love and acceptance for ourselves to our interactions with people that does not require us to make ourselves acceptable to them in order to be their friend and they ours. When your higher ego vulnerability and feelings of anxiety, anger, or fear are distanced to you from comfortably meeting with people, you're not able to be the connective love God is towards they and yourself. We must bring love into our interactions with all people so that we can be connected to others in ways that allow relationships to grow socially, emotionally, and spiritually. When your higher ego vulnerability and consumption with the weaknesses and imperfections of your humanity are burdening you with a weakened or absence of love for yourself and others when meeting with them, you're not able to be the unburdened love God is towards all. We must bring love into meeting all people, so we are not weighed down by unneeded concerns about the weaknesses and imperfections of our humanity. When your higher vulnerability and feelings of anxiety, anger, and fear are limiting the amount of love for yourself when meeting with people, you're not able to be the unlimited love God is towards yourself. The participation in social experiences with unlimited love for oneself, as well as others, will give them opportunity to bear fruit 
and enhance all who partake in them. When love is the emotion driving one's thoughts, words, and deeds. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, or less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. Next, we'll talk a little bit about ego's impact on being the life God is when meeting with people. People with higher ego vulnerability have difficulty being spiritually well when lacking self-acceptance and discomfort with the weaknesses and the imperfections of their humanity is leading them to dishonor and disrespect themselves with unneeded and often misguided efforts to make themselves and have others know them as more acceptable than they know themselves to be. Your divinity involves recognizing, honoring, and respecting all people, including yourself, as you meet with them, so that you can give they and you the respect all deserve when participating in activities and conversations with them. When your higher ego vulnerability and the lack of self-acceptance are leading you to dishonor and disrespect yourself, with failure to meaningfully participate in social activities and interactions, you're not being the life God is towards yourself. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to respect and honor what you have to offer to others within your participation, as well as what you can gain from these experiences. When your higher vulnerability and consumption with the weaknesses and imperfections of your humanity are leading you to dishonor and disrespect others with efforts to prove yourself to be greater than and more worthy than they are, you're not being the life God is towards they and yourself. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to honor and respect all in the awareness that you need not prove your, to yourself or others that you are acceptable or better or worthy. When your higher ego vulnerability and concerns about social rejection are leading you to dishonor and disrespect yourself with failure to tell others no when this would be appropriate, you're not being the life God is towards yourself. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to know greater honor and respect for your needs when they may not align with those of others, and your right to have them recognized, even when it comes with the displeasure and disapproval of others. But when ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, or less spiritually well and failing to be your divinity. Last, we're going to take a look at being the energy God is and ego's impact on it when meeting with people in work, play, and other social settings. This involves being able to access healing and transformative energy that's been designed into your being to naturally occur when you're connected to human and divine truth. This is a capacity that's been three million years in the making, just as all the other wondrous things that you and I have been endowed with due to the wisdom of the ages and evolution. This is a capacity rooted in our common source, be it known by you as God, Allah, Yahweh, Vishnu, Great Spirit, Source, or another I have failed to mention. People with higher ego vulnerability have difficulty being spiritually well when failing to interact with people within the light of truth and understanding about people that can be found when they are not consumed with rejection of their humanity, including its weaknesses and imperfections that is serving to obscure this light. Our divinity involves healing and transformation in which we are willing to meet with people, to be with them, 
while seeking the truth and understanding that can be found within us and them, that can lead to social, emotional, and spiritual growth, when it's not being obscured by consumption with difficulties involving the acceptance of one's weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity. It involves healing and transformation in which we are taking responsibility for seeking truth and understanding about ourselves as well as others that can lead to social, emotional, spiritual growth as we interact with them that is unencumbered by the distortion and distance brought forth by frequent or intense feelings of anxiety, fear, or anger. When higher vulnerability and difficulty accepting your humanity is keeping you at a distance from knowing greater truth and understanding about yourself and others that can promote social, emotional, and spiritual growth, you're not being the energy God is. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will welcome opportunities for you to know yourself better, to better know others, and to allow them to get to know you within the welcoming of your humanity. When higher vulnerability and feelings of anxiety, anger, and fear are keeping you from learning truth and understanding about the humanity which exists in all people, you're not being the energy God is. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will allow you to recognize the truth of the weaknesses and imperfections of our humanity, which exists in all people. When higher vulnerability and preoccupation with the weaknesses of your humanity is keeping you from knowing the truth and understanding about the divinity which exists in all people, you're not being the energy God is. The development of healthy vulnerability with ego medicine will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of the divinity which exists within all people, and that can be of service to yourself and all people as you meet with them. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity. As we leave our focus on ego's impact on our spiritual wellness, please know that we often make God and our connection to God and others so much harder than it has to be. And this is what's happening when unhealthy ego energy is getting in between us. God and life and we become so much better and so much easier when we remove that obstacle with ego medicine. As we leave our focus on higher ego vulnerability and difficulty getting along with people in healthy ways, give some thought to the symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact I've shared with you today. I hope that what I have shared will serve as a dose of ego medicine. And if any of it resonates with you, please help me to share it with others. I want to mention before leaving that you can purchase each of my books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, The Two Voices Within, and It's Your Ego Stupid at the online bookstores for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Balboa Press. You can also purchase Focused Ego Meditations on the Shaw page of my website, egoandspirit.info which can help you to know when you are truly speaking with your voice in your life and not egos as you go about healing your ego energy where needed in its power, flexibility, or vulnerability. I end today's show with this message. The great news is that working to heal your ego energy using ego medicine by growing your awareness of its symptoms ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact will allow the divine truth in your being to flow and to shine through you. 
and allow you to fully embrace each of the divine gifts. The spiritual part of healing is a given. It's part of your endowment. Divine truth and the divine gifts are part of your heritage that already exists within you. You need do nothing more to be spiritual because you already are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You only need to enhance your humanity with ego medicine so that all which is available to you is given. Fix your ego to fix your life, humanly and spiritually. Thank you for listening and allowing me to be your servant. Please have a great week and do come back to my next program. In peace and love, this is Dr. Nick saying goodbye for now.